All right, take us through these ratings. There's a lot of rating stuff, but obviously the... Um, SmackDown did a gigantic number. Yeah, the um, the the uh, actual... Um, um, the number was... Uh, t- where, where are we? Um, let me start with um, Rampage first. So Rampage... So here, here's like a, a key thing, you know, and I've said this before, that on Friday nights, what's killing, among the things that's killing Rampage is that SmackDown is doing so well because it's whenever the, um, and this is a perfect example, when SmackDown does a great rating, SmackDown finished, um, you know, probably at 3 million viewers, um, probably by the end of that segment, at the end of the show. Um, with the the bloodline and everything, so you would think, oh man, three million people watching wrestling at like nine fifty five, and um, you know Rampage starting at ten, they're going to get a great number because all these wrestling fans are home, and it didn't work out that way at all. You know Rampage did three hundred fifty seven thousand viewers um, with a zero point one two, um, you know, and it's that's a very that's very low as far as total viewers for the time slot. Although eighteen to forty nine um, was uh, you know, I mean, by my, you know, it's not a great number in, in you know, if you look at it like that. Um, but it was um, 12th in, for the night on cable, you know, which is not bad. And it was um, third, I think, in the, yeah, it was third in the time slot behind um, College Softball World Series on ESPN and On Patrol Live. So, um, you know, I mean, look, third, third in the time slot is still in some ways good, but... Um, yeah, the total number of viewers was was way down from the week before, down um, uh, 18%, um, even though 18 to 49 was actually up a little bit. Um, you know, so um, SmackDown did uh, 2,563,000 viewers, but which is really good, and it's the strongest since strongest of the year. Um, the last time they did a number this big was um, – when John Cena wrestled, although I, you remember that tag match, he wrestled about 30 seconds, but the whole show was built around Cena. But in 18 to 49, they did an 0.73, and in 18 to 34, they did an 0.50, which are phenomenal numbers. Um, and um, the 18 to, you know, it, it, the, the 18 to 49 number was the best in years. And, um, you know, it was for that final segment, you know, I mean, they... Um, they started strong, they, but but they grew throughout the show, waiting for that final segment. Final segment did uh, two million. Um, what was it? What was it uh, two million nine hundred one thousand? That's with a commercial break during that. Two segment, million nine hundred one thousand so. and and um, one point one three million. One 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 point one three million. So that's um, I believe uh, what is it? Zero oh, point. Uh, uh, what what would that? translating to I have it in here somewhere um but it was um yeah um I think it's like 0.87 or something some incredible number um yeah it was 0.87 was the 18 to 49 number in the final quarter and um you know I mean it's people are interested in that and then next week is going to be uh built around which side is Jey Uso choosing and he, he better choose the Jimmy Uso side or else the storyline's getting, you know, if it's, it, it, it's got to be, they've got to have a more balanced feud because if it's Roman Reigns, Solo, and Jay, you know, and I think that when you watch Paul basically say that Jay's going to choose their side, that sort of tells you that Jay's not going to choose their side. Well, you know, you could, you could do the deal where, you know, Jay, for whatever reason, ends up with Roman and then you do the Roman Reigns Jimmy Uso match, and of course he's horribly outnumbered, and he would obviously get beaten. And then you know as the other guys are beating him down, that's when Jay just decides it's my brother. And then he does the big turn, then saves his brother, turns on Roman and Solo. You get another turn there, and then uh, you you lead into the tag team match. So uh, you could do it that way because uh, that you also could. buys you some more time. You could, you could do that, sure, sure. Um, but yeah, it's a phenomenal number for the show, and um, it was uh, obviously it beat everything um, on uh, on television that night because there was no NBA game or anything like that. 
um, in just about every category. Um, they even won with women um, in 1849, which they usually do not do. You know, they do very well with men. And uh, great, you know, just a great, great number. They were up um, from last week. They were up 41.5% in 1849, and they were up 61.3% in 1834. So, I mean, that's just... And then from last year in 1834, they were up 92.3%, almost double. So, um, you know, the, the, the 18 to 34 numbers actually was the most impressive of all of them. And then uh, we got a couple more things as far as last week because the uh, charts did not come out until today because of some delay at Nielsen. But anyway, Dynamite on Wednesday was second, which we already knew, was second to Vanderpump. Um, but what was also interesting is that AEW beat ABC, CBS, and NBC head-to-head in both hours um in um i should yeah in the in the first i take that back in the first hour um there was a uh, fox did beat it in the second hour so um in the first hour um the only thing that beat aw on actually nothing beat aw on television right um in um because vanderpump was hour two um it was well i take that back the um it was second behind Master Chef in, in hour one on Fox, but one on what was first on cable, and then the second hour is behind Vanderpump and Gordon Ramsay on Fox. So it beat three of the four networks in both hours, and uh, so that number, so that's um, you know very very good. And then um, NXT took fourth, and they're never that high. Um, I think that's the highest finish that I can ever call from NXT. They may have been in there. Um, during one of those Wednesdays, maybe when they were beat, when they beat AEW, I think there was once that happened once. Um, but they were, um, they were fourth on cable. They were third in the time slot. And, um, you know, that was, uh, basically the deal there. And then ultimate fighter also was debuted on Tuesday of last week, which was the Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler series. And I think that that was, and that's on ESPN, so it's number one cable network. And um, it did 294,000 viewers and 0.14. I think that that would be pretty disappointing um, because, you know, it's Connor and everything. Um, It was, I I remember I was asked, and it actually did better when, um, when I was asked. I think I said low threes, so it was a little bit below what I expected there. And I think I said like 0.11, 0.12. So it actually uh, beat my expectation a little bit in 18 to 49, but that's also week one. Um, I'm guessing that it will probably be dropping in week two and three and all that just because the first week's usually going to be the highest or something like that. So um, anyway, off to a uh, ultimate fighter, it was was off to a weak start. I mean, that's the same level of number as um, slap fighting. Same level of number as AW All Access. So, um, and I think that the return of Ultimate Fighter with Conor McGregor on it, I think that, uh, man, I think that they would be wanting significantly better this than that. plaque. I'm still yeah. waiting for this stupid plaque. Yeah, Bischoff. Paul and Bischoff or who? What in God's name is going on? Uh-oh. Who let you in here? Everybody's favorite. Come over here. You can't even be seen. What? Oh, my God. Oh! Happy days here for Brian Alvarez. There it is. Presented oh, to F4W that. Online for passing 100,000 subscribers. Uh-huh. I want to give Oreo a hug. Come here, you big fat whale. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to everybody hey! out there. Uh-oh. Hey! Uh- what are you doing? Brian? Oreo? Hey! Take it over the show. Oh no. Dom, Oreo. hit that music, brother. How oh, the hell with it? You know what? It's Monday. It's dance party. No, no, man. Yeah, no. I love you guys. I love you. When can you have this much fun on a Monday on Wrestling Observer Live? I think we may have started something new here. I hate that whale! 
If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.